Um, and while at it, you've also been pretty vocal on on vaccines. <laughs> uh, and, yes. And 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 have taken uh, you <laughs> you've taken on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, shall I say um, an advocacy role in in like as as an African uh, researcher and as an African health leader mm -hmm. on 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 the issue of vaccine, um, and which which is important. Mm -hmm. um, so the the is this is it, is this a personal choice? Is this a personal journey, or is this? Um, is there a message that you you have wanted to um, to pass across um, in this entirely in this as a, as an African leader? Mm. Where, where is the root for that? Is there a particular frustration that it's coming with that you aren't seeing? <laughs> uh, I would just like to understand where that where the root of that is and where it is also heading towards. Yeah, I think my vaccine advocacy is grounded in maybe three things, mm -hmm. and um, some are, some of those things are interconnected. Mm. But COVID has sort of thrust them, you know, at the fore. And uh, there were things which have been happening that have been frustrating for quite some time as an African scientist, as an African uh, leader, as somebody like as I said, grappling on the space of the fact, the the, the role of evidence and science in mm -hmm. decision making. Mm. So somehow all these things have sort of come together. Mm -hmm. But then there's the other things happening in the world. Mm. Actually, I think before COVID and vaccines, I, I would I was seeing myself more as a decolonized global health yeah. person. Mm -hmm. But this vaccine advocacy is also connected mm. to decolonization. Mm -hmm. So as there are several things uh, which are sort of coming together. Mm. And I, I think my advocacy started with decolonization mm -hmm. and the reason it is because there was no vaccine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there were no vaccines, mm -hmm. and uh, it was um, clear from the the initial response and the initial reaction of the world and the initial narratives yeah. how bad the global health system is, how broken it is, how bad really. I don't think there's any other word to describe it. Mm. It's a very bad system it that is. has not served Africa, has mm. not served the world. Mm. I think it has served other parts of the world, but it has not served Africa. Mm. And that system is a self-perpetuating, self-reinforcing system of mm. power, dominance, and influence. Mm. And there are many things which support it and prop it up. Mm. And so that, it, like the, the discussion was, the start, was starting around decolonizing. Mm -hmm. Then vaccines came in mm -hmm. and the vaccines are a symptom of that process. It's yeah. not, it's, it's just a symptom of a broken system. Yeah. So let me start from what is broken about this system. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> when you see, um, how do you get power and influence in global health? Resources. Uh, yes, you have resources. So mm -hmm. it, it depends on what, what you are as a player. Mm -hmm. But if you are a scientist, mm -hmm. if you're Bill Gates, of course, you have money. So mm -hmm. you don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. You just say, I have a billion dollars mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. everything moves mm -hmm. to get a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you're a scientist, what gives you power and influence? is a profile it's mm. a track record yeah how a track records built mm. I, I mentioned that in, mm. you know as in the path of a, of a researcher mm -hmm. so you do research you publish your papers get cited mm. you get a citation index mm. um, they, there are some measures around mm. the hi and all this mm. h index and i index mm. all these things are things that label you that define you mm. and that people read and interpret mm. and they give credence mm as a measure mm. of your credibility mm. and a measure of your competence mm. and a measure of your expertise. Mm. So this has now become like a currency where people do research, not because this research is going to change anything in the world, but it's going to add a long list on their profile. On their profile, yeah. And it's going to increase their I index and H index. Mm. So then it becomes like an industry. So research, mostly on Africans, Mm. becomes an industry mm. for people to gain power and influence mm. that gives them more money to do more research, to gain more power and influence. So it becomes like this self-fulfilling thing that mm. is up there mm. that does not add a lot of value mm. on society, mm. to humanity. Mm. Now, when you move from there, if you're an academic or 
I don't know, you work, you, you do a master's and MPH mm. and you do these papers and you publish them and then you get the CV. Mm. Then now you can actually use that CV, that profile, apply for a job mm. in an international NGO. Mm. Then it gives you power mm. over resources, mm. power of ideas. You yeah. can sit and you say, uh, Kenya, I think we need to define um, a program on nutrition mm. for Northeastern. Mm. Because you published, you did some research in Turkana mm. when you were a master's student at mm. Johns Hopkins. Mm. And it has given you a platform. You have access to people who have money. You have access to people who can listen to your ideas. It doesn't matter how stupid they are, but you have access because the system has been set up that way. So it's like this system that is there and it's self-perpetuating. Mm. And benefits to, to the largest extent, mm. the people who are operating that system, not the Africans mm. on the ground that are supposed to benefit from that system. Right. So global health is set up like that. So mm. you've ended up with a system where um, you have the global south has problems. Mm -hmm. So many problems. Who has defined those problems? Mm. Remember, I talked about data. Mm. Sometimes this is not because that's what the data says. Mm. It's because somebody has built a career mm. around a around problem. Around that, yeah. If you've been if you've been doing malaria vaccine research for 35 years as a scientist, malaria vaccines are a thing to you. It doesn't mm. matter what value they have in the bigger scheme of things. To the people, to exactly. the community. If mm. you have access to the Gates Foundation, mm. malaria vaccine can become a thing that mm. is a big pillar of global health because mm. they are your career. You've built yeah. a career around them. Yeah. I'm not saying malaria vaccines are bad; they're great. Mm. But I'm just giving an example that people build careers around issues. Mm. And then they use the power and influence that the scientific system gives to them mm. to access resources mm. and then to define problems mm. and then define solutions. Mm. So Africa, we are here sitting and waiting and people bring all sorts of stupid problems mm. and stupid solutions. Mm. And they keep on mm. and they build careers out of them. Mm. Then mm. they move on yeah. or they retire. Yeah. And we're still here, With like marketing time. Left with the same issues. Exactly, mm. marking time. Mm. And the system is so entrenched because even me, as a scientist, mm. what gives me credibility is that system because mm. I can publish papers, I mm. can get grants. Mm. And yet, I think my experience in Irushere mm. maybe is more important mm. than the research I've published. Mm. But there's no way to quantify that experience and give it value. Yeah. There's no, the system has yeah. not yet been set up to value yeah. my experience as a the surveillance officer for Barara district doing Ebola. Yeah. That one is not quantifiable. Mm. And I cannot use that to gain any kind of influence. Yeah. Or if, any kind of grant or any, <clears throat> yeah. So now you can keep on cascading it down. Mm. If you are the, if you are a clinical officer in Koibatek mm. at a health center too. Mm. The value of your experience in keeping that thing running, mm. health center too. Remember, I was in Rochelle in this in this kind mm. of environment. Mm. You cannot quantify it. You cannot sell that experience to anyone. No one mm. wants. To, no one cares. Mm. So they'll come and tell you you have a problem in Koibatek, and they'll bring a solution, and mm. they'll bring a grant, and they'll bring money. Mm. Then they'll run a project for three years, and they mm. leave, and they leave you there. Mm. And the problems that they were trying to solve are still there. No one asked you. And yet, your experience, your value is the most important in all of this. Exactly. But mm. no one, you don't have a way of pitching yeah. your own wisdom and yeah. knowledge mm. to anyone who cares to listen. Mm. So that is how global health is set up. Mm. That for us, we are recipients mm. of problem definition mm. and we are recipients of solutions. Yeah. However stupid those decisions are, however stupid those solutions are, we are still there. We are yeah. caught up in this system of receiving, receiving, mm. receiving mm. pity and mm. support and mm. money and mm. ideas. So that's where we were <laughs> in, mm. in, um, in decolonizing global health. Mm. Like we have to dismantle so many things, mm. but the, the beginning point is the knowledge system. Yeah. We, have, we need a system that acknowledges that my experience mm. as a medical officer mm. in the middle of nowhere mm. is matters. It's most important, yeah. Yeah. It and so how do I harness yeah. that? How do I mm. use that? Mm. And how do you amplify the how voice How do I amplify of that? it? Exactly. Yeah. So that is where we were. Mm. And what prompted me personally was uh, George Floyd, surprisingly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because I watched that clip and I said, my goodness, that, could be, that could be me. Mm. Because the way the American system is set up right now, you don't have to be a criminal. You don't have to be anything. You just mm. need to be black mm. in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm. 
and people can take a video of you being killed mm. and of course they'll go to jail but you're dead mm. so that's that was like what kind of system gives somebody so much power to have over such impunity mm. over a life mm. what kind of system is that mm. now take that system the decolo- the, de- the colony of global health mm. of course has roots in that mm-hmm. so it's not as if these are separate things that's true you know somebody sits in washington and they think I'm going to go to Kenya and I'm going to solve Kenya's problem. Who, who gives you that power <laughs> to think you can solve Kenya's problem? Mm. Because you've been part of a knowledge system that has given you papers and a CV, and then you sit and say, okay, I can solve Kenya's problems. Mm. And the system allows it, and it gives you money, it gives you resources. You come and you build a career and you move on, whether Kenya's problems were solved or not. Mm. Maybe you care, maybe you don't. Mm. You move on to a bigger job mm. and you solve other problems that never get solved. Mm. So this is this environment in which we are. And mm. so I, we had started sort of like a debate about the decolonizing. Mm. And for me, the thing that was pissing me off the most, mm. excuse the language, mm-hmm. was how African countries responded to COVID so well. People can have all sorts of theories about, yeah. you know, how, you know, we didn't drop dead in the streets. African countries were doing well, did very well mm. at the beginning mm. to do the right thing mm. epidemiologically mm. from a public health perspective. Mm. And it was as if we don't exist. We were managing this very incredibly. People should have come to learn from Africa. Exactly. They should have come from Africa. Mm. But who, nobody thinks about coming to learn from Africa. Mm. It's almost as if we have nothing that mm. the world to can offer. learn from us. Mm. We have nothing to offer. Mm. And then what happens? I went to the UK just just before all hell broke loose. Mm. Reached the airport, mm. nothing. Got my luggage, went to the hotel, nothing. There was just a little thing in a in a, an elevator mm. saying if you traveled, I don't know, to China and this and this and you have a fever call the NHS, this mm. number. Mm. Nothing. We went for a face-to-face meeting in March. I returned on March 11th. 2020, this is. Mm. 2020. Mm. And Kenya closed March to March 15th, 16th or 17th. Mm. There was nothing happening. We had a face-to-face meeting. There were no masks. Mm. There was nothing. There was nothing mm. happening. Mm. Because the system, when people think about the pandemic, they expect that this was a pandemic of the South, the global South, which need where, help. They yeah. need solutions. They mm. need. They have huge problems. Mm. Their healthcare systems are weak. Mm. They are broken. Mm. You know, they have all these narratives mm. about how bad things are. Mm. And therefore, the world was ready to come and save Africa. Mm. Then, they forgot their own stable and all the horses mm. bolted. Mm. Now we have a pandemic. I think courtesy of the rich world, the mm. rich countries, because they trusted their systems. Their mm. systems are great. Mm. So there's a certain way the system is broken that if it's northern, it's great. If it's southern, it's broken mm. and needs to be fixed by somebody from the south, mm. from the north. And yet they couldn't fix their own mm. pandemic mm. response. Mm. So we have a pandemic courtesy mm. of mm. a global health system that is distorted. Mm in how African knowledge and expertise mm. is viewed mm. and valued. Mm. Then enter vaccines. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I think my hope really, because what I think is a lot about <laughs> this vaccine thing, mm. my hope is that um, the African political class mm-hmm. has really realized how expendable African lives are. Yeah. In this global system. Mm. And then the question is, okay, then what? What do we do? Mm. Because African lives are expendable. Generally, in the global system. Yeah. In the global, not just health, in the global security, in the global health, in, yeah. Yeah. In all of it. In all of it. Mm. And so as as African political leaders, that's the thing, like, where do we start mm. to recognize that we, we are on our own? The world has abandoned us. Mm. The world doesn't care. Mm. They are pretending and they're saying all these nice things, but they don't care about Africans. Mm. So as Africans, what, do, what can we do for ourselves? Mm. And How like, do we galvanize? How do we come together? Exactly. And forget this yeah. dependence yeah. on goodwill and yeah. charity. Yeah of the western world yeah it is not intended to solve any problem no it's actually the reverse it is intended to keep us in problems yeah and dependent on yeah. on, on 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 support and on aid uh loads of poverty <laughs> yep yep because mm. it's a as i said it's an industry it's an mm. industrial complex mm. where mm. people build careers around yeah. it it creates jobs yeah it creates employment it mm. creates mm. narratives 
mm. of um, mm. who is helping others. There's mm. some things I read and cringe. Mm. I'm like, stop saying that. Stop mm. saying that. Mm. You know, poor countries, mm. rich countries. Mm -hmm. um, mm. um, we can't do trips waivers, but we can donate vaccines mm. to you. Imagine. <laughs> and manage like to weather a storm of criticism and, and everything and still land where exactly the system was designed to land. Yeah. That rich countries will donate vaccines to poor ones. Yeah. To African ones. Yeah. So um, that's where I read really this whole thing. As I said, it's frustration about global health yeah. as it is, mm. but it's also frustration with um, the disconnect between the political leadership mm. and the research, mm. science, mm. R&D mm. ecosystem, mm. that disconnect and how hard it is. Mm. And then of course, there are other things which are like within mm. that whole thing, the disinformation, mm. the misinformation. Mm. The anti-science aggression, mm. um, yeah, mm. I, I think it has parallels with the decolonization thing. Yeah, uh, the the same energy people have put in being anti-science, mm. if left unchecked, mm. is similar to the energy of somebody who can step on somebody's knee and kill them. That is true. So that's why I feel like there's mm. a huge danger. Like we have to stand up for science, mm. and um, mm. you know it means wrestling in the mud. <laughs> we wrestle. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. And